A little over a year ago, Zwift introduced the Zwift Cog, a single speed cog which offers virtual shifting. Basically, your smart trainer adjusts the resistance to match what it would if you just changed gear. Positives to that, less wear to your drivetrain and it runs pretty quiet. Sounds good. All it requires is a firmware update to your smart trainer. So Wahoo delivered the update to the Kicker Core and to the Kicker V6 and they promised it would come to the V5. However, it didn't. They then announced it wasn't coming to the V5 at all. As a V5 owner of just over three years, I was pretty hacked off to be honest, and a bit gutted when I saw the new Zwift Ride frame, and it only worked with the Zwift Cog. Now I'm a mountain biker, and usually use an old stump jumper to, to use on Zwift. Uh, the Zwift Ride frame would have been ideal for me. Um, a more efficient indoor bike with a smaller footprint. Good news though, uh, there's an app called QZ Fitness, which has me covered. QZ is an app available for $4.99 on the Apple App Store and it will bridge the gap between the Kicker V5 and the Zwift Cog. Now QZ's primary function is to allow older exercise equipment to be able to integrate with the likes of Zwift and other training programs. A more recent feature to this enables virtual shifting on Zwift with a non-compatible device. If you're new to the QZ app, you might find it a bit daunting. There's a lot of information and options there. It took me a while to get it working and a few emails back and forth with the creator, Roberto Viola. The support was A1 and Roberto was even contacting me at the weekend, emails back and forth. The aim of this video is to show you how to set up the QZ app with an older generation device and hopefully it'll save you and Roberto some time. Now I usually run Zwift in my garage on my Golf Simulator PC, which means I have a lovely 4.5 meter wide image projected in front of me which is definitely more immersive than having a, an iPad about three, three feet in front of me. Um, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to do it on my iPad so you can see my phone and my iPad on the same screen. I'm also going to be filming the phone and the iPad screen, so apologies if they're not crystal clear. Right, so the first step here is pretty obvious. We're going to download the QZ app from the App Store. So I'm an Apple user, App Store. I assume the Play Store on Android is the same, but I don't have anything Android to test it with. I'm just going to type in QZ, and you can see here it's going to come up with this one here, which is QDOMYOS Zwift. I'm going to load that, and that's the icon for it. You can see the little sign I've already downloaded it. I've paid my four ninety nine and got it. So download that. Now, here's where the fun starts. Um, the version you're going to get from the App Store is not the latest one and it's not the one that enables virtual shifting. Unfortunately, you're going to have to contact Roberto and ask him for version V2.18.1, which at the time of making this video is the latest, but I guess you just ask him for the latest one. Now his contact details can be found in the help section of QZ and it's roberto.viola83 at gmail.com, which will pop up on the screen. You then need to install an app called Test Flight, which is uh, available from the App Store as well, which allows you to install beta software. So Roberto will send you a link to that. And once you've got Test Flight, it's basically inviting you to go on his beta. And again, I've, I've done this already. So I've got this here and I can click Install. Now we can open it. So immediately we're faced with a few options. Do you want to allow it to find the Bluetooth devices? Absolutely, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, do you want it to monitor your fitness? Well, I will because I like my stats. Um, do I want it to find devices on my local network? Yes, I do. And would you like it to send you notifications? I don't really, I will say no to that. So the start screen's got a kind of wee wizard. We're going to click start. Uh, I'm going to choose first time setup. I'm going to choose bike and from the list I'm going to select my kicker which it's found because it's switched on. Next, I'll stick with metric and I'm going to go next. I'm going to put in my weight which is 79. I'm going to put in my age which is unfortunately 47. I'm male and I'm going to go next. I've got the choice to add a heart rate sensor here. I'm just going to skip this just now. 
um, obviously you may want to do that and choose my preferred app is going to be Zwift bike resistance level I don't actually know what the answer to this is um, I'm going to leave it on the default setting but you can go back into the options later and set this if you want thank you for completing the setup right so this is our home screen here um, with a, a list of stats on it there's a few extra things we need to add to make this work so we're going to go to the menu which is the little guy in the top corner you see that and then settings so first of all i am going to choose the zwift options where are we here and i'm going to do get gears from zwift i'll close zwift options and then I'm going to go down to accessories and I'm going down further to Zwift device options and I'm going to do Zwift play, I'm going to tick that I'll close that and we'll close accessories, just try and keep it neat and next I'm going to go to bike options where are you? there and quite far down bike options I've got Wahoo options and in Wahoo options I'm going to do preset gear profile I'm going to pick reality bender 24 even spaced which is the default Zwift gearing and I think at that point I just come back it's saying in order to apply the settings you need to restart the app yes please and then we'll open it again Again, this immediately finds my kicker when it starts up. There we go. Last thing I'm going to do to make this a bit easier is I'm going to go into settings again and I'm going to go to tile options. And part way down there, I'm going to find gears there and big gear buttons. And I'll come back out of there. And what this is going to do is at the bottom, it's going to add the gears and big gear plus and minus buttons. So now all the boxes are ticked in QZ, uh, we've got to follow a specific startup routine to get this to work. QZ's already paired with the kicker, we know that. Um, make sure your controllers are not on just now and we can start up Swift. Get ready for your favorite music. Right, power source. My phone is called Noodle. That's its Bluetooth profile. I want to choose Noodle, which is the QZ app, not the actual kicker itself. I'm going to do the same for cadence. Use Noodle. I'm going to use the same for resistance. Noodle. At this point, I'm going to click controls. Can't find any, so now I'm going to turn on my handlebars. So you can see they've automatically paired, you heard them buzz. At this point, I'm now going to go back to power source and I'm going to change it to the Bluetooth for the kicker. In cadence, I'm going to do exactly the same. i change that back to the Bluetooth for the kicker. Resistance is going to stay as noodle though. And off we go. Pick any old route just to get it going. And start right. So the first thing you might notice is I'm on gear 8 in Zwift, but you can tell the virtual shifting's working because it's come on, and I'm on gear 0 here. So what I find easiest is using my button here, down, 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 down. So I'm on 1, this is still on 0, I'm going to use my big gear button, this is why I put them on, I'm going to make that 1. And now, when I start riding, Nice and easy. I can press my up button on my right hand too. You can see them going up here and you can also see them matching there. So that one's on three, it's now on four. That one matches four. And I can fire away through my gears. Up. 
the same token if I change hand. Put my on 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and you can see 7 on there. So it's all working, which is good. So now you can go explore Watopia with your virtual shifting and your Swift cog. I'd like to say a big thank you to Roberto for the QZ app. It's definitely going to save me some money um, not having to upgrade my kicker to a supported device. I think QZ's got a lot more to give than I'm just showing here and I'm hoping one day I can set my Swift ride frame up with the likes of Ruby or Be Cool and try that out. I think I'm done here um, so I'd like to say Thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful.